Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery. This is just the corner of my basement that I refer to as my wormery because all those tubs that you see, those all have worms in them. That includes the bag over here. That's got worms in it as well. They've even got buckets that have worms on them. I got a bag outside that's got worms in them. But today we're going to be dealing with a couple of my newer systems, getting them fed. It's only been nine days since we last fed them, but some of the stuff that they got last time were corn cobs. And then besides the corn cob, there was also a um, banana peel placed in there, but just one per bin, which um, kind of might be gone by now after only nine days. Corn cobs will definitely be remaining as leftovers. In fact, they'll be in here for probably months before they're eaten. But today, we're going to be starting a new novelty item in these two European Nightcrawler worm bins. On day 45 of being in service, receiving their fifth feeding, the feeding is going to go in tandem with, you guessed it, a brand new fabric composting test. Once again, we're doing cotton. Besides cotton, you could do other natural fabrics, such as wool or silk. And maybe one of these days we'll get around to doing that as well. But I've got these t-shirts here. As you can see, they're kind of um, technology focused. One of them is a Microsoft shirt, the other is a Roxio shirt. I'm not sure Roxio is still around. I probably got that shirt about 25 years ago. <laughs> Attending a Macworld Expo conference in New York City. That was a company that produced software for burning CDs back in those days. So we're going to get these little guys up on the bench. We're going to get them fed and we're going to get these cotton composting tests underway. So I'm going to slip on a glove and we're going to get to work. I'm fairly sure that those tabs, those care instruction tabs that also show which side of the shirt is the back, is, um, is probably not a natural material, I would almost guarantee it. But as far as the rest of the material in these um, shirts go, I'm fairly sure that it'll tell you that these are 100% cotton. Not sure if it's labeled as such. This one definitely says 100% cotton, as does this one. And obviously that doesn't mean the label. But one thing I found when I was composting some towels, that was my most recent fabric test, I noticed that the um, thread that was used to sew the edge on the towels was not a, um, cotton. It was some sort of a material that did not break down in the worm bin. So that stuff eventually had to get removed, but everything else was eaten. And I'm assuming that that's what's gonna happen here too. The labels will remain from those t-shirts. And who knows, maybe some of the thread used to sew the edges of the seams of material or whatever, but for the most part, the worms will most likely eat everything. I ran three other fabric composting tests previously prior to the towel was a couple socks a pair of socks and um, on that too there was the uh, the portion that goes around your calf the elastic that portion had some I guess synthetic material in it as well which did not break down and then there was also um, let's see oh yeah prior to that came an attempt at even breaking down more towel it was in fact the same type of towel material that was the focus of the most recent test but that very first test where I tried doing the cotton towel I had to call that test short because I had problems in those bins so I don't, don't know if I can consider that as a, a failed attempt. I would probably treat that more as a incomplete attempt. But so far I've had good luck breaking down the socks. And then um, also breaking down the towel. And then number three here is going to be, well, technically number four, but more the most recent one here is going to be the t-shirts. And I have good reason to think that they're going to do quite well in here. 
So now in our last feeding, we had laid down a couple larger chunks of cardboard. That's sort of the basis for the feeding that they got last time. So like I mentioned earlier, there was corn cob, but corn cob is the sort of thing that's going to take some time for them to break down. There was also banana peel, but I'm seeing so far only the stem. Perhaps here and there there's a little thing that could be maybe leftovers of the banana peel. And there might have been another corn cob. I think there might have been a couple corn cobs placed into each system. So we'll just go through here really quick and yeah, here we go. Some more chunks of corn cob. We'll take a quick peek at how they're doing on that last feeding from only nine days ago. Yeah, it seemed to me like the corn cob being a very slow composting item was fine that they got that. However, I didn't think it would last. I figured the banana peel might be the only thing that they could really dig into deep today. And that coming back down here to replenish their food supply was probably a good idea. So we've got ourselves a nice little worm party happening here. Not sure what was so interesting for them that they're gathering around. I don't know if it was corn cob or what, but there was definitely a little bit of a mob scene going on around the um, around whatever it is that they were working on over there. So now I got to keep in mind that the these T-shirts are pretty good size. I had contemplated doing this fabric composting trial in my recently launched buckets but it just seemed like you know the opening on the bucket is not even half the size of the opening of one of these tubs and it seemed like if you ever wanted to like pull that thing out take a look at how the shirts are coming along it would just become a big mess it would be very difficult to keep things contained there so I kind of opted not to use the buckets but it seemed like here in these fairly new systems only 45 days of age we got a long ways to go before these systems would get harvested so these seemed like the perfect place to come in here with the um the t-shirts and since they're pretty large in size it does seem to me like we've got to create a fairly large hole into which we can place the shirts so we've um, started on bin number two. For me, left to right always kind of goes with bin number two, but I always try to orient things from your perspective. So perhaps the older bin is here and the younger bin is here, or on bins like these that were both launched on the same day. I put the one that I label as number one to your left, so that in the video at least it is in that order to be read from left to right either in sequential age order or just in the order in which they are numbered. Even with the buckets, when I bring the buckets out, I try to maintain them in order unless we've got some sort of a good reason to deviate from that arrangement. So here too, we're finding some of the cardboard that had been placed down in here. This cardboard was actually used to help migrate the worms out of their old environment. And that old environment was finally decommissioned during the most recent check-in nine days ago, at which point we had hauled out the last of the worms to get them over here reunited with the rest of the worms that were used to launch these bins 45 days ago. So that puts me that much further ahead in terms of having available compost in my collection, although I've not yet even unloaded <laughs> the bus box in which all that compost is sitting there. So I've got to get around to doing that one of these days and free up that bus bin for other uses. Uh -huh. It must be the banana peel that they're so excited about because here it is, the banana peel we're seeing, oops, well, the banana peel fell, but we can see the worm party that it caused. They don't like being held and they don't like being in the bright light. That's for sure. It feels so funny the way they squirm through your fingers. <laughs> oh my. It's 
Isn't it cool the way they all kind of get themselves out of the direct light? If we were to like flip this over, sort of like a pancake. Oop. <laughs> That's where all the worms are. Let's try this one more time. One more little short clip of me who's holding them here in front of the camera. Once again, they've done a pretty good job burrowing down out of view. So, you know what? I gotta go grab my, my paintbrush. I know that with my worm, I mean with my paintbrush, these little worms that are stuck to my glove, I can get them off gently without harming any of them. And I can also slip my hand in. Oops, well I thought I could be a little bit more graceful with this, but I guess as I was holding all these worms in my hand directly above the two bins right in the middle, a number of the worms just managed to sneak in between my fingers and fall. So I'm not so worried about the castings, it's more the worms that I want to collect up and get back into a safe spot rather than leaving them out here on the dry paper on the table, which would not do them much good. All right, let's get things. <laughs> put back in order here so we can get this job done so the stuff I've got for them is coffee as well as a couple replacement coffee filters to be our new feeding zone indicators and a whole bunch of potato peel compliments of my mom she stopped by yesterday and bought along some stuff for the worms so let's just once again get back to creating a large enough space into which we can place the t-shirts so I figured we'd kind of go in alphabetical order M R Microsoft into the um, number one bin and then Roxio into the number two bin but before we can proceed to getting the fabric positioned down into the feeding areas why don't we just restore all of these existing items that we stumbled on across the feeding areas back down into the feeding zones so that they're in a good spot to continue yeah these corn cobs will take some time before they're completely eaten something I've been doing for some time now in my worm bins is just leaving corn cobs to break down without any help you know some people once they get soft enough fragile enough to be crumbled and broken up they just break them up um, my, my typical thing to do would be to leave them be but I have a feeling that um, since I don't know been kind of in the mood for corn this season so a lot of corn cobs keep stacking up and they're going to be showing up in a lot of my feedings so I think rather than having uneaten corn cobs all over the place <laughs> in all my systems we're going to uh, we're going to get in the habit of trying to crumble them up a little bit each time. So the, um, the stuff I'm sprinkling in is just a little bit of my prepared bedding. I figured just give them a little extra shot of that too as long as we're in here. And then these are going in dry. You know, I wondered if this might be a problem. They're going to just maybe absorb a good deal of moisture into themselves. And these are pretty large. So here it just says, where do you want to go today? I think that was their slogan for their Microsoft Office package. I believe we were in the process of rolling out Microsoft Office version 4.2.1 B <laughs> at the time onto all the Mac workstations where I was working. So 
Microsoft was kind enough to send us some promotional materials to include with the, um, the project planning process. So whenever we had some designated liaisons for the different departments that we were going to be working in, we had some little gifts to provide them. And then here on the Roxio t-shirt, you can see the name of the product that uh, they were promoting at their booth at the Macworld Expo. It was a product called Toast. You can even see an image of a toaster here with a couple CDs sticking out of it. Preparing to be toasted or burned, if you want to call it that. Or maybe they've already been burned. <laughs> it's hard to tell. CDs, you can't really tell the difference unless you look very closely as to whether or not there's anything on the CD or DVD. But back then, I think that was still at a time when CDs were kind of mainstream for storing data, but DVDs had not really come on the scene at the time yet. So besides coffee and a little bit of worm chow getting sprinkled down into these t-shirts, I've got this mound of potato. And I wonder if we're going to have to return to my shelf to get our little pocket knife because this stuff is pretty much frozen solid and I guess if I'm not careful and I try to do this sort of stuff my fingernail will poke through the glove and will be out another glove I can't remember it might have been the day before yesterday that we had to replace my glove because it broke I try to be careful and not damage the gloves that I'm using. I try to get as many uses as I can out of them. So, we're trying to stack the deck here a little bit in terms of promoting worm activity in and around these fabric items. So that's the reason I figured we would kind of bundle the feedings deep within the t-shirts so that when the worms sense that there's some yummy food in there to eat, they'll have to kind of get in there to eat it. And then as long as they're in there, maybe they'll spend a little time nibbling on the, the cotton it's, itself too. So you know what? Why don't we also include a little bit of my worm chow out here on top. See if that helps a little bit too. Let the worms dig in. And you know, I'm wondering if another idea might be to just Pour a little bit of moisture in here. I've um, I've opted to use an old milk jug to create a little bit of my BTI solution. The BTI solution is sort of meant to um, treat your pond or if you've got standing water on your property. The BTI is meant to um, help reduce mosquito populations. So what I do is I take a little sock and I create a little tea bag out of the BTI cookie. It's like a little chunk of material that soaks into the water and creates the BTI solution. So I figured we would gra grab a little bit of that since it was handy and easy to apply. And I think that kind of brings us to the end of the check-in. So I really hope we're not lining ourselves for a up for a big messy disaster over here <laughs> trying to get into these shirts each check-in to see how they're doing I mean I did also contemplate taking another approach to these shirts which was to maybe just leave them there leave them right there smack in the middle of the bin perhaps not even bothering them leaving them to be and then adopting in these two bins the the feeding method that I've done in some other systems in the past but recently haven't done much of which is to switch the feeding location each time from one side to the other and that in a way would cause a lot of um, traffic I think with the worms attempting to you know pursue the most recently added supply of food and in order to do that they would have to always cross the center of the bin and spend a little bit of time interacting with those fabric 
test objects. So I'll have to think about that, but that did seem like maybe a good idea. And when you're doing that, it's times like that. It kind of makes a little bit more sense to be marking where you last fed and having feeding zone indicators because then sometimes it is a little bit difficult to tell, hey, which side of the bin did we feed last? It's not entirely obvious. But in the bins that I'm running these days, I'm pretty sure that for the most part we're just feeding down the middle in most cases, which makes figuring out where the most recent feeding zone was pretty straightforward and simple. It's down the middle, <laughs> just like everywhere else. So maybe at some point in the future we'll be able to actually give these feeding zone indicators a little bit more purpose by using them to show ourselves where we last fed either this side of the bin or that side of the bin but for now we're just going to stick to the center feeding approach perhaps by the next time we get in here we'll be able to adopt the um the ping pong approach or whatever we decide to call it the back and forth approach to alternating which side of the bin gets fed each time so that brings us to the end of this check-in seems like the uh, amount of material in these has risen considerably with that fairly large object placed inside each system, which is kind of cool. I like to see that. Um, and I'm just wondering how long we'll have to wait to come back in here. That little supply of coffee, warm chow, and potato probably isn't going to last too long. Maybe we'll be back here in another 8 or 10 days, like we were here today. But that'll be for another day. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.